Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisance of Sogda Fisher Prabhupada. Welcome to devotees to today's class. This today we will be discussing from Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Leela, chapter 4, verses 21 and 22, two verses combined in one. And the chapter is entitled, The Internal Reasons for the Appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We are very happy to have His Holiness Chandramali Swami with us. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you and Shri Prabhupada. What's the chapter title again? I'm just the internal, um, the internal reasons. reasons, I believe that's yeah. what it is, much. I'm just going to confirm. Internal reasons for the, the internal reasons for the appearance of Not confidential reasons. Yeah. The confidential reasons for the appearance yeah. of Shaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. Okay, you said eternal. It's internal. Yes. Sorry, Maharaj. Sorry. Yes, it's yeah, confidential. Internal. Thank yeah, you, Maharaj. Internal is also eternal. Yes. <laughs> so you're right. But then the I'd... external and the internal are both eternal. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Yes, Mark. <laughs> so your Freudian slip was, was giving us a higher understanding of transcendental uh, under, uh, knowledge. <laughs> Haribo. Haribo. Thank you, Marge. My mistake. I didn't know it was going to be that, but thank you, Marge. There's no such thing as mistake. It's just seeing things from a different angle of vision. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Marge. Thank you. Well, so here we go. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vinda Mora Putra Mora Sakta Mora Pranapati E Baba E Mora Kara Sura Bhakti Apanake Baramane Amare Samahina Se Baba Ai Ami Tahara Adina if one cherishes loving devotion to me, thinking of me as his son, his friend, or his beloved, regarding himself as great, and considering me as his equal or inferior, I become subordinate to him. Mm -hmm. Have to listen to this purport before you can understand that verse. <laughs> In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, there are three kinds of devotion. I mean, namely, bhakti, ordinary devotional service, suda bhakti, pure devotional service, and vaida bhakti, mixed devotional service. When devotional service is executed with some material purpose involving food of activities, mental speculation, and mystic yoga, it is called mixed or adulterated devotional service. Besides bhakti yoga, the Bhagavad Gita also describes karma yoga, jnana yoga, jnana yoga. Yoga means linking with the Supreme Lord, which is possible only through devotion. Food of activities ending in devotional service, philosophical speculation ending in devotional service, and the practice of mysticism, ending in devotional service, are known respectively as karma yoga, jnana yoga, and jnana yoga. But such devotion service is adulterated by the three kinds of material activity. And three kinds of material activities are the three modes of material nature. For those grossly engaged in identifying the body as the self, Pious activity or karma yoga is recommended. For those who identify the mind with the self, philosophical speculation or jnana yoga is recommended. The devotees standing on the spiritual platform have no need of such material conceptions of adulterated devotion. Adulterated devotional service does not directly 
aim for love of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, service performed strictly in conformity with the revealed scripture is better than Vaita Bhakti because it is free from all kinds of material contamination. It is executed in Krishna consciousness solely to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Those who are spontaneously devoted to the Lord and have no aim for material gain are called attracted devotees. They are spontaneously attracted to the service of the Lord and they follow in the footsteps of self and one soul. Their pure devotion, Sudha Bhakti, manifested from pure love of Godhead, surpasses the regulative principles of authoritative scriptures. Sometimes loving ecstasy transcends regulative principles. Such ecstasy, however, is completely on the spiritual plat platform and cannot be imitated. The regulative principles help ordinary devotees rise to the stage of perfect love of Godhead. Pure love of Krishna is the perfect perfection of pure devotion and pure devotional service is identical with spontaneous devotional service. Lawless execution of regulative principles is exhibited in the Vaikuntha plays. But strictly executing these principles, one can be elevated to the Vaikuntha, Vaikuntha, Vaikuntha plan. But spontaneous pure loving service is found in Krishna alone. So keep it there. Don't change that place. Om Gyanta Mirandasya Gyana Gyana Samataya Chaksu Minam Tamina Tasmaya Sri Guru Vena Maha Mom Vishnu Padai Krishna Vyastana Bhutale Sri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Mirdase Sasunya Bhadi Pasyat Yana Pachayana Panchakopa Tarugas Chakri Pa Sindhu Te Bichata Gitanam Pavane Gyo Vaishnava Gyona Mahona Mahajai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhumi Tananda Sri Advaita Gadar Har Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakti Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So here is giving the uh, aspects of the different it's uh, categories of devotional service all the way up to pure loving service or Sudha Bhakti. Here it is mentioned, it complements the uh, statement of the translation. Sometimes loving ecstasy transcends regulative principles. Such ecstasy, however, is completely on the spiritual platform can it not be imitated? Can you highlight that sentence? You see the sentence I'm reading here. This is what is being said in the translation. And so it cannot be imitated, but it is very elevated in such a way that it actually controls Krishna. In other words, Krishna is controlled by pure, spontaneous, loving devotion. When the devotee takes the position of serving Krishna with love in the mood of friend, parental affection, or conjugal love, which is the mood of the uh, residents of Sri Vrindan and Dan. When we come into devotional service, we have material desires. And therefore, we cannot automatically come to the stage of pure devotional service. It's a process. And the process means uh, Vaidhi Bhakti, as it's mentioned here, because Vaidhi Bhakti is, the, is following rules and regulations that are meant to get us off the material platform and onto the spiritual platform. We are not on the spiritual platform yet. We are practicing the process by which we can get onto the spiritual platform. And therefore, because of we are still mixed in our, we have some regard for devotion and for Krishna, but we still have attachments to the material energy. 
in the activities that we perform. And so this is the process that we begin with. But as we follow carefully the instructions of the spiritual master, which guides us towards the platform of pure devotional service, and along with those instructions is the essence of all instructions to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. We, we actually surpass our desires for material happiness or material success, and we develop spiritual desires. In other words, we come to the platform of finding happiness and executing devotional service, but we're still mixed. Now, until we have developed a taste for hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. In other words, that taste is an attraction for Krishna. His pastimes, especially his pastimes, and Sri Vrindavan Dham with his intimate associates, which are the pinnacle of sweetness. The different levels of sweetness are progressive from Sakyaras to, to Ratsaya Ras, and then to the ultimate principle of sweetness, which is Madhurya Ras. All of them are imbued with the sweetness of the relationship that one experiences with Krishna by hearing about his pastimes and meditating on him as he performs these pastimes with his pure devotees. <laughs> and then one starts to move towards what is called uh, spontaneous attraction for Krishna. That spontaneous attraction for Krishna is situated within the soul's existence. As the scriptures say, Nitya Siddha, Krishna Prema, Saru Kabunoi, Sravanari Siddhi Chitte, Kodiya Idoi, in the hearts of all living entities, ecstatic love for Krishna is manifested there. And it needs to be brought out by the process of pure devotional service, which comes when one carefully follows the instructions of the spiritual master and makes a personal effort to hear and chant the glories of the Lord more and more. Satang Satang Prasangam Mamaviriya Sangbido, Bhavanti Ritkana Rasayana Kata, Najoshina. Um, go to that verse. It's worth it. It's uh, third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, 25th chapter, 25th verse, 325, 25 from Srimad Chapter 25, The Glories of Devotional Service. Chapter 25, go to the actual verse. Right. Okay, in the association, yeah, let's, let's get to the verse. In the association of pure devotees, discussion of the pastimes and activities of the Supreme God, Personality of God, is very pleasing and satisfying to the heart and ear. By cultivating such knowledge, one gradually becomes advanced on the path of liberation, and thereafter he is freed and his attraction becomes fixed. And then the last line sums it up. Then real devotion and devotional service begin. So this verse illustrates what brings us to the platform of real devotional service. And real devotional service means that devotional service that is spontaneous. And the spontaneity comes by the process of hearing and chanting and also remembering the pastimes of the Lord, particularly his pastimes in Vindavan, in the association of great devotees. So here is the process right now. So one should seek out the association of advanced devotees and hear from them about the glories of Krishna's activities, especially Krishna's activities in Sri Vrindavan Dham. 
So it's based on association and hearing and developing an attraction and it becomes sweet. And then one starts to perform devotional service naturally. It doesn't become a piecemeal step-by-step activities that one is simply performing some activity. One is attractive not only to any activity of devotional service, but specifically to Krishna's pastimes in in Sri Vrindavan Dham. And this is what this verse in the Chaitanya Charitamrita is illustrating, that when one gets to that platform, Krishna becomes controlled by that devotee. The devotee has developed a, a loving attraction for Krishna. Because Krishna indicates that quality about himself, he can attract anyone and everyone. Even those who are presently unattracted, they can become attracted if they follow this process of getting attracted by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord and the association of those who perform those activities. So then, as it mentions here, then real devotion and devotional service begin. And so this is the essence of our practice of Krishna consciousness. And it it relegates one's consciousness to the level of being uh, uh, Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma Nasochati Natangshati Samasadeshi Bhuteshi Mad Bhakti Labhate Kalam. One becomes happy. One doesn't hanker for anything material. One doesn't lament if they lose something material. One is fixed in devotional service. And then as the verse continues, the last line, it says, they can enter into the kingdom of God. So this is the stage that that verse is speaking about. And Shaitanya Mahaprabhu says, devotional service means spontaneous devotional service. Mixed devotional service is what it is. It's mixed. Any activity, even material activity, or any activity in this world, whatever category it falls into, has some element of devotion, unless it's demoniac, unless it's in the mode of uh, sub-ignorance. There is some element of devotion. But when we actually perform the activities of devotion or service, we are in a mixed consciousness. We still have tendencies towards the material, and we also sometimes up for the material over the spiritual. But when one gets an attraction for Krishna, one becomes fixed, and that fixation charms the mind and the heart, and Krishna becomes revealed to the devotee through the activities of hearing and chanting about Krishna. And when when one goes to the temple and sees the beautiful form of the Lord and his threefold bending form standing there along with his internal pure loving energy, Srimati Radharani, one's minds and hearts become infused with emotional attraction just simply by seeing the beautiful form of the Lord. When the results come by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord more and more. Now, this is the process of devotional service. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining from the higher platform, as this chapter is categorized as internal devotional service, or the internal reasons why Lord Chaitanya appears. The internal reasons, you might say, are the confidential reasons. The internal reasons are the essential reasons. The external reasons are the activities of devotional service. But devotional service is meant to awaken pure love for Krishna. Therefore, that is the goal of devotional service. And therefore, the process is very direct, but it has to be executed in the association of those who are advanced in devotional service. Of course, any association with any devotee is recommended as a means to stabilize one's practice of devotional service and gradually take the advantage of making making progress in that association. 
But when one associates with great souls, pure devotees, and then that is compared to the elevator as opposed to the staircase. The stair elevator will move one faster up towards the higher floors. The staircase will do it also, but it's slower and it's more arduous. But in any case, we want, in any case, when the elevation is there. So it's not that because we don't have association with or cannot find association with pure devotees, doesn't mean we can, we should not associate at all. We should associate with devotees always in all situations. But those who are on the platform of pure devotional service, their association is so powerful that if we're in the right consciousness, the verse says, Saru Sangha, Saru Sangha, Sarva Sesri Hoi, Lava Mata, Sarva Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi. That this Lava Mata is dividing a moment into 11 parts. It's called one eleven of a second. So a second divided into 11 parts is a Lava Mata as mentioned in this verse. And that means that's that's how fast one can attain pure consciousness. That's 11th of a second. If they are in the proper consciousness. And getting into the proper consciousness means to hear and chant the, the glories of the Lord in the association of the devotees. Um, in the Bhagavatam, Krishna says, Shri Shri Shadadhanasya Vasudeva Kitaruchi Shanmi ad seva vipa purnia tirtama seva na. By rendering service to great souls, great service is done. And by such service, one gets an affinity to hear the glories of the Lord. And then the next verse is. is um, uh, Sutam Sutam. Sitam Sitam Tam Tamasiri of the Lambido, Avanti Ritkarna, the Sayan at the top. Najo, no, no, that's, what is that verse? Two sixteen. Uh, two, one, two, sixteen. What is that verse? One, Ishman Bhagdha Maharaj? Yeah. First chance. Second that's the that's the previous verse I just quoted, which leads to the next verse. This is first canto. This is um, one, two, sixteen, right, Maharaj? No, uh one, two, that's two. No, the next verse, one, two, seventeen. Yeah. By practicing one, two, sixteen, one comes to Srinvata Svakata Krishna Pony Shravana Kirtanaha, Vridyanta Abhrasdhani, Vidyanoti Srihutsapam Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is Paramatma, super soul in everyone's heart. And the benefactor of the truthful devotee cleanses, he cleanses desires for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee who has developed an urge to hear his message. He's doing the work. He's cleaning your heart as you develop that urge to hear his messages. And those messages are virtuous when properly heard. And chanted, this verse is fundamental to the prog progress of devotional service. And it proceeds, or it follows, the verse of rendering service to pure devotees. Then that taste to hear and chant the, the glories of the Lord arises within the mind and heart of the aspiring devotee. So these two verses really culminate in the process of developing spontaneously attracted to the Lord. And the next verse, not. Uh, uh, Brahma, what is that next verse? Uh, uh, 
a little deficient on my Sanskrit today. Nasta prayeshu abhadreshan nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama sloki bhakti bhavati nice ki. And then Prabhupada culminates in that purport by saying, Here is the remedy for inauspicious things with the heart, rendering service to the pure devotee, and destroys everything. And then by reg and also hearing regularly Srimad Bhagavatam, which are the glories and activities of the Supreme Personality of Bhagavad. The Bhagavad, Bhagavad book and Bhagavad person together are the complete package by which one can come to the platform of attra a spontaneous attraction for the Supreme Personality of Bhagavad. Okay, so Lord Chaitanya is not is teaching uh, Vaidhi Bhakti, he's teaching Raganuga Bhakti, a spontaneous devotional service, which is really devotional service. The, the love for Krishna is in the heart of all living beings, and it spontaneously comes forth through the process of pure devotional service. Spontaneous devotional service is devotional service. The rules and regulations are mixed. It's getting us off the material platform and onto the spiritual platform. But as we follow carefully and hear from the spiritual master and very carefully follow the instructions, and one of the main instructions is to glorify the Lord by chanting his holy name, associating with and serving devotees, and worshiping the Lord in his form as a deity by coming to see the deity in the temple or establishing the deity in one's home. All of these are foundational in awakening that loving relationship with the Lord. Then material desires and material attractions become uh, eliminated simply by this process of pure devotional service. These this, these eliminations of our attractions to the material world are the disturbances that cause us to be unsteady in devotional service. This unsteadiness causes one to to become up and down in one's practice of spiritual life. So, but here's the formula for getting rid of that, uh, as as that verse says. Uh, in association with devotee, pure devotees, hearing and chanting the glories of devotees. Okay, so we're all lovers of Krishna, but we have to come to the platform of experiencing that loving relationship by uh, accepting the process of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord in the association. Of great souls. Thank you, Mark. This was a very deep class, I have to say, and I'm sure everybody might probably agree with me on that. I will stop sharing and would like to ask devotees if you can please uh, ask your questions, uh, raise your hand so that I can actually see everybody. And um, or you can put the post in the chat and I'll be happy to answer. Yes, Brickshit, you can go first, please. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very much for the class. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to see the power of God. Uh, can you just simply define when I saw ordinary devotional service, which is what was on the ordinary devotional service? Can you define that? Rather than, because we know mixed devotional service, right? When there's material motive behind it, then what's ordinary? Is there a is there a terminology for that? Our ordinary devotional service. Yes, that was put in. Um, Mamaraj, mm -hmm. it was in the verse that we read from Chaitanya Charitamrita yeah. just now it, in the purport where it just said, where, uh, it just it said, said bhakti. That, yes, it said. Uh, three kinds of devotional service, namely bhakti, ordinary devotional service, sudha bhakti, pure devotional pure service, devotional and vidha bhakti, mixed devotional service. Ordinary bhakti means um, simply following the rules and regulations. Okay. And only one's activity. 
Mixed devotional service means when one is still attached to something material. Mm -hmm. um, one can perform devotional service without material attachments, and that is ordinary devotional service, but it, one has not reached the platform of spontaneous devotional service yet. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to fulfill their material desires. Although they, although they may still have material tendencies and even material desires, they're not focusing on that. Mixed devotional service is trying to mix, uh, you know, sweet rice with sand. That's why mm -hmm. ordinary service is superior to vaidhi bhakti, because the vaidhi bhakti is still looking towards the material energy in some way for some satisfaction, some fulfillment, although there is some activity in devotion and serving. Hopefully, when he gets to the stage of an art and nivritti, after accepting the spiritual master, then he will eliminate those uh, material desires. So ordinary devotional service helps you to move faster through the stages and come to the stage of uh, of, uh, of mm -hmm. Inspirational service mm -hmm. because one is not trying to fulfill any material desires, but still one is executing devotional service under the guidance of a spiritual master following the rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Raj Prabhu, you had your hand up and it went down. Do you want to still ask a question, Prabhu, before I go to Sri Devi? I had the same question as Pritchett, probably. Thank okay, you. okay. Thank you. Sri Devi, go ahead, Mataji. Thank you, Anusia. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance for the audience to Srila Prabhupada. So, Guru Maharaj, I'm still trying to understand what is the difference between karma yoga and mixed devotional service with material desires. How is that different or is it the same? It's the same because you're, there is the activities that one is following under the guidance of the spiritual master. But um, one is using, one is uh, doing what they want and offering it to Krishna. Devotional service is doing what Krishna wants and offering it to Krishna. Karma yoga is more like, um, well, I make some money, and so I offer some then some of that money to the devotees. So I use my material benefits to serve the Lord in that way. But I'm still very much engaged in activities uh, that are based on getting some kind of material result. <laughs> in other words, there is still the karma yet. But using the results of karma to offer it to Krishna, that's karma yoga. So it is still better to engage in mixed devotional service because at least we are following the process rather than just karma yoga where I'm interested in uh, getting results for myself and I'm just that's sacrificing not portion. Huh? That's, not, that's not for devotees. That's right. Not for, okay. That's for who are just coming into Krishna consciousness. Sometimes okay. people in the outside world, they have some occupation and they're, they're maintaining family and they have attraction for devotional service, but there's still their main activity is their material life. That's not for devotees who are regularly following the process of devotional service. And Rupa Goswami says it is a pinprick in developing pure devotional service. This, this karma yoga. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I mean, karma yoga is better than just blatant karma, <laughs> but it's still, it's still, you know. It's about me. It's not about Krishna. Thank you, Sri Devi, for that nice question. 
before I go to Tirta Mataji, there's a question that she popped up in the um, chat from uh, Scarlett Prabhu, where she says, please accept my humble obeisances, so you should proud, but I've understood your holiness read that to read Srimad Bhagavatam regularly every day is like chanting 16 rounds. That's her question. If your question is, the idea is that you can substitute one for the other, then no. But if you understand that glorification of the Lord is on the absolute platform, then yes. So glorifying the Lord by reading the Bhagavatam or chanting his name is glorification of the Lord. It's absolute. I actually heard that today from Srila Prabhupada in his lecture. There's no difference between chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and hearing the glories of the Lord from Srimad Bhagavatam and reading it. But still, that doesn't mean you substitute your reading for chanting. So if you get that into that mentality, then you'll be you'll be committing the third offense, dissipating dissipating the orders of the spiritual master, who tells you to chant your rounds every day. Thank you, Marge. Mother Tirta, please go ahead. Ah, ah Krishna Gurudev, please accept my humble obeisances. All yours to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for that wonderful lecture. It helps me a lot further because I need a lot of help. <laughs> Thank you so much. I hope your, your health is returned. No, I can see. It's still, it's still on the way of returning. Okay. It's not yet here, but... Tell me, ask your good friend there, uh, Soma Dachi, to come and take care of you. <laughs> yeah, she is. She's a real angel and coming every day. I have yeah. good help. That is a help. And about Guru Maharaj, please uh, give a little blessing for Mata. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mother. Thank you. We will pray for your health to come back and be stronger again. Hare Krishna. Okay. Thank okay, you Hare so Krishna. much. Hare Krishna. Yes, Raj Prabhu, please go ahead. Maharaj, you're talking about, you're reading about how Krishna is doing all the work in cleaning our hearts. Cleaning us from our uh, our our mixed incorrect desires. So, what is it that triggers and uh, triggers Krishna to do that? Is it our desire, the intensity of our desire? Is it our effort? Is it uh, the mercy of pure devotee? What makes Krishna clean our heart? It's all of that. Yeah. It's all of that, what you said, all three of those statements. It's your effort, it's your desire. What was the last one you said? Yeah, it's all of that. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, if you go to Bhagavad Gita, what is that verse? Tesham Satata Yukta Anam Bhagita Pati Purvakam Dhami Bhuri Yogam Tam Yena Mama Kulata. Okay. I dwell in the first. Well, that's the next verse. Uh, what is that? What's the translation for that? I can think of the translation for the next verse. Uh, one who worshiped me with love. I give them the understanding by which they can come to me. I give the understanding. You worship with love. They, Krishna gives you the understanding how to get to them. Then the next one, Tesham Evanu Kampartam, Aham Magyano Cham Tamaha, Nasyayam Yatma Bhavasto Gyanadi Pena Bhaskata. 
eye dwelling within their heart, destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. I do it. Krishna does it. He's doing it by your desire, by your efforts, by the mercy you take, you get from you, the execution of your devotional service. You can't become Krishna conscious, but you can act in such a way that you can receive the, the mercy from Krishna that will make you Krishna conscious. Uh -huh. You have to this. And hearing and chanting in association with great souls is the uh, fast track in devotional service. To use a a ordinary terminology, but if we had no attraction to hear and chant the glories of the Lord, then the verse, as we mentioned, serve the devotees, and that attraction will awaken. Thank you very much, Maharaj. That's helpful. Thank you, Raj Prabhu. Very nice question. Any other questions from devotees that you would like to ask, um, clarify, get a deeper understanding of? Marj, I have a question that is um, that I was really caught by the last um, paragraph of the verse that we read in Chaitanya Charitamrita, where Sri Prabhupada says, flawless execution of regulative principles is exhibited in the Vaikuntha planets by strictly executing these principles, one can be elevated to the Vaikuntha planets, but spontaneous, pure, loving service is found in Krishna Loka alone. So does that mean, Marge, that spontaneous devotional service is above regulatory principles? And if it's that so, but we still have to follow the principles to get to that, right? To get to the, um, get to the higher grades, you got to go through the lower grades first. You have to pass the, the statements of the lower grades. But when you get to uh, the perfection of following regulative principles, then you can spontaneously engage in, in pure devotional service by following what is called uh, Raganuga Bhakti Sadhana. We're following Vaidhi Bhakti Sadhana now. Now we can follow Raghunuga Bhakti Sadhana. Now that's explained in the, by, uh, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita also. But it's uh, it's nicely explained in a condensed form by Shiva Ram Maharaj in his book called Spontaneous Devotional Service. He described what is the... Uh, activities of those who are aspiring for that that level of devotion. What are the activities? What is the consciousness? If we don't come to that stage, we will never taste the uh, the happiness, the, the sweetness of devotional service. So, coming to spontaneous devotional service is is coming to the stage of devotional service. Rules and regulations are, will get you higher and higher, but once you get to the perfection of rules and regulations, uh, if you if you perfect it and then you leave the body in that, then you achieve uh, Vaikuntha. Uh, the story of Gopal Kumara from the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. He was his internal mood was spontaneous attraction to Krishna and Vrindavan. But he attained this, the, the status of entering into Vaikuna, Vaikuntha and meeting with uh, Lord Narayan. And he, he had transcendental loving attraction for, for Lord Narayan, but he couldn't exhibit it there because that that is not the mood. No one jumps on the back of Lord Narayan and plays with him or uh, 
as uh, you know, loving intimate associates with him unless yeah. even Lakshmi serves the Lord in Dasya Rasa. She's not serving in the Lord of Madhurya Rasa. So there's only two and a half uh, Rasas in Vaikuntra. Neutrality, servitorship, and friendship with Krishna being superior. But in like um, Vrindavan, then all of the rasas are there. Mm -hmm. So that's what Lord Chaitanya came to teach. Lord Chaitanya is has the inter internal mood of Ra or Srimati Radharani. And Radharani's devotion for Krishna is spontaneous loving devotion. He's exhibiting that in his pastimes, in his later time when he was performing his activities with his intimate devotees. But he's teaching us the process of how to achieve that through the through the, the Nam Sankirtan movement, through the chanting of the holy name and glorification of Krishna in his mood of Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. So if we follow carefully Lord Chaitanya's process, it becomes sweet and what we say, progressive, nice. Mm -hmm. we need Thank to you, Marat. A regular dose of hearing and chanting in the Christmas pastimes every day as much as possible. Not just when we feel like it. <laughs> mm. Sometimes you might not feel like it. <laughs> mm. Thank you, Marge. That that helps. Thank you. Yes, Dr. Brett, go ahead. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. All glories to you. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for the class, Maharaj. Um, you know, it was just was just meditating on how we were talking about Vaidhi Bhakti. Um, and you had just brought up, you know, Raga Bhakti, and that was sort of my question. You know, as, as we're practicing in the temple, you know, aspiring to be devotees and, and engaging in Vaidhi Bhakti. You know, I I myself, you know, as we as we said as you know, you said in Srimad Bhagavatam Kanta too, Srila Prabhupada puts, you know, for us to in engage in the Shishashtakam prayers and understand the meaning we have to, you know, serve serve the pure devotees. And uh, my question is, Maharaj, you know, are there these minute moments where we can, you know, feel as if we see Raga Bhakti being executed? You know, we're all practicing to be devotees, but I find, you know, the the most special moments for me when I find, you know, compassion and love and bhakti is when I see devotees acting out spontaneously, whether that be in any variable form, whether that be dancing, whether that be singing, you know, their artistic abilities, or whether that just be how they jump in to care for devotees or how they uh, jump and act in service. So is it is it wrong to, you know, as, as aspiring devotees, look to our seniors and think, oh, you know, wow, here's a moment of, of raga bhakti and then, you know, also go back to the basics and appreciate, oh, this, you know, devotee is also giving me Vaidhi Bhakti at the same time. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, and there are um, spontaneous devotional service will manifest at any time, but it becomes fixed on a certain level of, of elevation in the, on, on, in the process. So even a neophyte devotee can spontaneously be attracted and act in a spontane in a, in a way that is spontaneous but it's not it'll not it's not sustainable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. only when it gets to the platform of freedom from all anarchists and material desires then it becomes spontaneous then it becomes a regulated feature of their activity well, we can't always judge by external uh, observation whether a person is exhibiting Vaidhi Bhakti or Raganuga Bhakti.
it's hard to actually say that this is the Raganuga, this is Vaidhi. Because you don't know the motivation behind the per person's motivation may be to get some prestige, to get some some remuneration for their activities. And that's still material, but that's mixed emotion. So. so the activity itself doesn't indicate so much the spontaneity, spontaneity or not spontaneity. It's the consciousness. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Bhakta Brett. Maharaj, just to piggyback on what Bhakta Brett asked. So is Ragan um is Raganuga Bhakti Maharaj pure devotional service? I'm sorry, spontaneous devotional service um as per when I am able to be spontaneous or spontaneous when the need arises? No, spontaneity is natural. It's not a need that arises. But the, it's not necessarily seen by external activity. It's the consciousness. Actually. A person on that platform uh, exhibited certain characteristics which are mentioned in the Nectar of Devotion. One of the characteristics is they do not waste one moment without activities in devotion as well. That's one of the characteristics of spontaneous devotion. So they don't like to waste even a moment unless they're somehow connected with Krishna. They sometimes become upset if they waste a moment or somebody tries to waste their time also. <laughs> They become disturbed by that. And Marsh, what is what are the dangers for someone to um, behave or act in that mood when they are not like they mimic? I think is the right word. What are the dangers? Artificial uh, imitation is what it is. It's imitation. <laughs> imitation doesn't doesn't attract anyone doesn't attract only the, uh, another person who is ignorant one might think that that's something good but it's not necessarily true krishna knows your heart so you're not going to impress krishna by it. <laughs> he knows your motivation Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Would it be like that that last point you said, you know, you know, the devotee in Raghunuga Bhakti doesn't take even even a moment. So would it be, you know, beneficial for us in our in our aspiring Krishna consciousness to say, you know, we can't you know, suffer being the bystander in situations. You know, we can't give up that moment. Mm -hmm. By, what do you mean by bystander? So just you know, just in a situation, let's say, let's say a devotee is hurt, uh, and, and and you know, there's ten devotees, and and nine of them are scrambling. Well, I don't know, I don't know what to do, and you know that one devotee at least takes up the gauntlet and says, you know, let's you know, let's at least you know elevate the leg, let's do this, let's take care of the devotee in a moment like that. You know, would that be displaying you know growth towards? you know what it means to act in Krishna consciousness it could only be practical knowledge so, yeah. mm. okay using his practical knowledge he might have that practical knowledge and know, knows what to do mm -hmm. so it's not to say like you know the nine the nine devotees who really didn't you know stand up to do anything are are necessarily any less or more it's just you know the devotee who had the leadership was there at the time luckily yeah don't try to categorize devotional service by external activities it's a matter of consciousness that's why you can't under 
definitely, if a devotee is on a higher level than, than you are, you can't understand their consciousness. You can only understand their consciousness of other devotees when they're either on the same level of you or on the lesser level. Those on the higher level you can't understand. Mm -hmm. So then yes, who's on the higher level? It's not by their external activities that makes them higher. It's, it's by the purification of their heart. How much they're free from all material desires and how how, how much they're fixed in the activities of the emotional service. If you want to really see how devotees act, and then we'll see who is constantly engaged in devotional service. One who is constantly engaged in devotional service indicates that they're either on the spontaneous platform or they're, they're heading towards that platform. They've understood the purpose of the rules and regulations, and they're executing devotional service free from personal motivation. Personal motivation is so subtle that even one cannot even detect one's own personal motivation. But to speak whether you can, another person can detect their motivation or not. So so don't look at devotional service from the external point of view. It's a, it's a feature of the heart. The external activities may indicate something, but not necessarily. Sometimes you see devotees, they really serve really hard for years, and then after some time, they're gone. <laughs> right, Parikshit? We've seen that so many times. Right? It's the, uh, you know... He's like flying all over the place. He's doing all kinds of service. He's doing all kinds of service. Gets up early, you know, reads the books, chants, does so many things. After a few years, it's uh, goodbye, Krishna. <laughs> We've seen that. <laughs> yes, but sometimes that happens. <laughs> right? It's, it's common, right? And so, and because their motivation is something else, the motivation is not devotional service, but to gain something material from the from, from the activities of more devotional service. And Krishna will kick them out after some time. <laughs> so, Marge, uh, just to. Um help my mind to grasp this is so you know like you were saying and i you know and you asked us to preach that you know we've come across situations where devotees do so much you know 10 15 years if you know and then after 15 years they leave is because they really didn't quite understand the the essence of devotional service in terms that they, they didn't have the right consciousness right maurice that's what it is yeah they have the wrong motivation mm. The right consciousness means wrong, um, improper consciousness means wrong motivation. Even if you have material desires and you have the right motivation, you'll make advancement. Even if you don't, even if you're not expert in doing things, still if your motivation is to purify your heart, to, uh, to awaken your attraction for Krishna, then you're in the right consciousness. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marge. That was pretty powerful. Very powerful. Thank you, Marge. Any Thank other you questions? You, Marge. That was a good question. Thank you. Yes, Srimati, go ahead. Yes, Mataji. Thank you. Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All goes to Shail Prabhupada. <clears throat> Thank you so much for the class. Um, and actually, I have a question from your yesterday's class where you gave in the Pune temple. I heard the recording. Uh, in that you were mentioning about helplessness and spiritual void. So how to avoid that and uh, how to be uh, aware of that, uh, um, Guru Maharaj? Uh, helplessness and spiritual? Void, spiritual void. You said that um, when we are not getting any mercy, um, uh, we don't, uh, uh, we don't um, try to get the mercy, but we instead we 
just simply watch tv or just distract ourselves and keep that aside and it will it will create a spiritual void um, which is like um, um, uh, which is not favorable for the devotional service um, that's what i understood the general tendency of all living entities is to find pleasure always and so when that pleasure is not there we might look for pleasure from something else or something to fill that void like going for our favorite pizza or uh, um, you know turning on the television seeing what's on the news or watching some movie in other words to try to fulfill that lack of spiritual happiness with some kind of, kind of material activity. Then, so the, but the idea is that one that that uh, that lack of taste is there there in devotional service. One should just remain fixed in their devotional service and pray to Krishna. That's all. Yeah. If the pace will come back if you stay steady. Mm. So this happens because uh, we just uh, take these devotional service activities as a material activities and just do it re normally, regularly, like a routine, uh, instead of finding a spiritual happiness. Is it, is it right? Well, it's like a person who lives in the material world and is unhappy, so he takes drugs in order to find some kind of happiness. Mm. Or gets intoxicated to find some happiness. He can't live life, so he looks for some intoxication to fill that that void of unhappiness. Same thing. So sometimes that unhappiness comes because we have committed offenses, and then the taste goes. And then we just have to be patient, work on uh, overcoming the reactions of defenses and stay engaged in devotional service. Mm -hmm. And the tape will come back in due course of time. Because the devotee has faith that there's nowhere to go but to Krishna. I don't have to go to Maya to find some kind of relief for my lack of happiness. Mm -hmm. Yes, Krishna. Thank you very much. That was a very deep question, Srimati. Thank you for asking. No, uh, yesterday's class was a wonderful class by Guru Maharaj in Pune Temple, and he answered such nice questions there. So, yeah, it was a wonderful class. Everyone has to hear. Okay. I will definitely play that. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Any other questions from devotees? Any, any other last minute? Um, clarification, you know, doubts, uh, please do uh, raise your hand. And I'm just going to go down the list here Hare to Krishna. make sure. Yes, go ahead, correction. Just a request from uh, Shima, to Shimati Devi. Uh, the um, class in Pune, how can we find it? It's in Facebook? It's where? Uh, it's on YouTube, uh, Prabhuji. I'll, I can share the link with Mataji. Um, so, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, please share it with me also, Srimati. Thank you. I already shared in our announcements group, Mataji, yesterday. Um, you can check there. Otherwise, I'll post it again. Um, I have a, an announcement which is coupled with a request at the same time. It's kind of a limited request because it pertains to devotees who are in the UK, um, there is one project called the Gita Project, which is putting Srila Prabhupada's books in hospitals, prisons, old age homes, nursing homes, so many different social programs for upliftment. Um, this project is called the Gita, Gita Project, and it's... Um, run by one very nice devotee. Her name is Rada Dasi. She was managed to get a Diwali program this year coming up in Diwali in prison. And she wants some help from volunteers from those who 
or in the UK, because unless you want to travel to the UK, it might be a little hard. So those who are in the UK can, uh, can connect with me and I'll connect you with Radha Dasi. Uh, she has a project for going into prisons during Diwali and doing a Diwali program on that day in the prisons. It'll be an exciting program. <laughs> uh, Radha Dasi is really, really quite enthusiastic in doing this service. Um, those who want to learn more about the Gita project, I sent it on the uh, on the conference today. There's two parts to it, my letter and then the actual description. But it doesn't include this program for Diwali. She sent a separate communicate to me. Here she says here, we have a, for our first opportunity to teach a course based on the Gita in a UK prison. Gita Project has been asked to do a Diwali program in a new prison in two weeks. It would be great if someone you know would like to help us with the Diwali program. She's always looking for volunteers. We have, I think there's about five or six devotees online who are from the UK. I can see a few names. Um, so yeah, we got Prima Bhakti, we got Sukhavaha, we got Ekta. Who else do we have here? We got Raj. Um, and so I know it's kind of exclusive for those who live in the UK, but I wanted to make it available for anyone. And if there happen to be traveling to the UK during that time, you can also get involved. In, um, Okay. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shri Prabhupada. All glory to the Lotus Feet and all glory to other devotees. Uh, I I did manage to contact Radha uh, Dasi Mataji, and uh, she's holding a course on this Sunday, on fifth of November, for us new new people to guide how to do that. So yeah, I'm I have already contacted her. So hopefully, I will get chance to serve. Yeah, encourage other 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 of your friends and associates to get involved this if, if you know anybody who's inclined. Yeah, sure. I think the bhakti would be perfect for the program. Uh, yes, Prabhuji. <laughs> I'm very much interested, yes. Yes, good. I'll speak to you soon uh, about this. Okay. Okay. Sorry that this announcement wasn't for everybody, but I had to get it out somehow. No problem, Marge. Absolutely no problem at all. I, yeah, glad that we could hear the news and the good news about the preaching. So that was a nice information for us. Um, I think uh, Scarlett asked, can we do this in Sweden? So probably Sukhava, probably you can reach out to her. Um, I I can check yeah. with Radha Dasi Mataji before. Yeah, you can connect with her about yeah. sure. going in Sweden. That is what she asked. Okay. Uh, Marge, would you... Marge, you said you had two announcements. Is there a second one that you wanted to? The other one is not an announcement. It's a request. Oh, Marge. okay. I'm sorry. Okay. No problem, Marge. A personal request from you. From me? No. Okay, do you want me to contact you after the class, Maharaj? I think so, yeah. It's, it's more personal, so... That's fine, Maharaj. Just... I'll contact you after class. Sure, Maharaj. Maharaj, would you like to end with one round of... Oh, go ahead, Maharaj. You wanted to say something. Yeah, one round would be nice. Okay. Let me get the uh, Java beads. 